Hi there. Let me take a few minutes and take you through this example of some two-way tables where we actually see a paradox occur. So let's look at some baseball players and let's look at how well they bat facing right-handed pitchers versus facing left-handed pitchers. So the baseball players are Joe and Mo. So Joe has a total of 100 at-bats. Mo has a total of 400 at-bats. So those are our column totals. Notice in this example, we really don't need to worry about the row total or the table total because I'm really just worried about these conditional distributions. So by that, let's look at Joe's batting average. So conditionally, looking at only Joe, he hit 40 out of 100 pitches. That would be 40%. We'll call it 0.4. So 60 out of 100 is 0.6. So Joe's batting average against right-handed pitchers is 0.4. Moe's batting average, 120 out of 400. That is 0 0.3. 0 0.7 then is the percent of the time that he misses. So his batting average is 30%. So in this case, Joe has the better batting average, here it is, versus right-handed pitchers. That's all I wanted you to see from the first table. So let's look at the data then for left-handed pitchers. So Joe takes a total of 400 at-bats against left-handed pitchers. For some reason, Mo only has 100 at-bats against left-handed pitchers. So again, let's look at their conditional distributions. So the 80 out of 400 is 0.2. So comparing hits to the total at-bats, Joe's batting average is now 0.2 against left-handed pitchers. So 0.8 then finishes that conditional distribution. Over here, Moe's batting average is 0.1 against left-handed pitchers, and again, finishing out the distribution, 0.9. So notice, in this case, again, looking at, for left-handed pitchers, looking at their batting averages, once again, it is Joe that has the better batting average. There we go. Now, something to think about, if we look at their batting results overall, so ignoring the handedness of the pitcher, notice, let's take a look at how these data were calculated. In total, Joe has made 40 plus 80, or 120 total hits. So that means that he has 60 plus 320, so he has 380 at-bats where he does not achieve a hit. Same thing for Mo then. The 120 plus the 10, he has a total of 130 hits. And then the 280 and the 90, that adds up to 370 at-bats where he does not make a hit. So notice both of them are taking a total of 500 at-bats. That is the sum of each column. But something interesting happens here. If you calculate their conditional distributions, the 120 out of 500, that's 0.24. So the 380 then out of 500, that has to be 0.76 to finish out the distribution. Same thing over here, 130 out of 500, that's 0.26. Then the 370 out of 500 finishes, and out, finishes out the conditional, conditional distribution at 0.74. Now notice, here is the paradox. Notice who now has the better batting average. It is no longer Joe. Joe's batting average is 0.24. Moe's is 0.26. So overall, Moe has the better batting average. This is what we call Simpson's paradox. When we look separately at the data for both right-handed pitching and for left-handed pitching, each time Joe had the better batting average. Now, when we combine the data into one table, it looks as if Moe has the better batting average. So let's talk about what this means. First of all, this is called Simpson's Paradox. Simpson's Paradox. This occurs when an association that holds true for multiple groups. So Joe's batting average was higher against both type of pitcher, right and left-handed. When that association is reversed, if data are combined to form a single group, and that's what we've done here, we combine the data to look at overall batting averages, this is a result of a lurking variable. A, a 
lurking variable here that is unaccounted for. So a lurking variable that is being ignored in this table here, a lurking variable that is being lost when you combine the two original tables into this table right here. So here's why this reversal occurs. Look at this carefully. The reversal above occurs because both players hit more poorly against left-handed pitchers. So look at this carefully. Both players are doing worse against left-handed pitching. Joe's batting average drops from 0.4 against right-handed to 0.2 against left-handed pitchers. Moe's batting average drops from 0.3 to 0.1. Both of them do worse facing left-handed pitchers. But notice most of Joe's at-bats are against these pitchers. So look, Joe has 500 at-bats. 400 of his 500 at-bats, 400 of the 500 at-bats for Joe are against the left-handed pitchers. Notice Mo has an advantage because only 100 of his 500 total at-bats are against the left-handed pitchers. So thus, when you combine the data, Joe's batting average is brought down when this lurking variable is essentially ignored. So Joe's batting average, when the data are combined, suffers from the fact that 80% of his at-bats are against the left-handed pitchers. Both players do worse against the left-handed pitchers. When you ignore the lurking variable of the handedness, if you will, of the pitchers, it actually does look like Mo has the higher batting average, but that's because Mo gets to take 80% of his at-bats against the right-handed pitchers, and both players hit better against the right-handed pitchers. That's the paradox here. So by ignoring or not accounting for this lurking variable of the handedness of the pitcher, we see a reversal in who has the better batting average. This is a good example of the effect that a lurking variable can have, something that you should always consider, something you should think about. Your job then for uh, this online assignment then, your job is to complete this question on the back where instead of looking at batting averages, we are looking at admissions to a business school, admissions to a law school, both of which are schools at a particular college. Something to think about, these are not actual data, the numbers have been simplified a bit so that uh, the numbers are a little bit easier to calculate with, but similar situations like this do actually occur in reality. Hope this has been helpful. I think it's sort of interesting also. We'll see you later.